I'm Judy Shaw for NYSE Floor Talk. Joining me today is Anna Bryson. She is CFO at Doximity. Anna, so great to have you on Floor Talk. Thanks for joining me. Judy, thank you so much for having me. Really happy to be here. Now, you're here today because you are participating in the NYSE IPO Summit, which is happening upstairs. So thank you for participating. Um, now, I want to talk about your IPO. Um, you've been at the company for several years ahead of your IPO, which happened last year. Um, tell me, what were the highlights of the experience for the company and for you individually? Sure. I think for the IPO for the company, it's the the fact that we were really able to realize that we had built something of such value for the team. I think the team really felt that on IPO day. And I think another part of it was the fact that we were able to have 10,000 physician members participate in a directed shares program that we did. So we were really able to get back and have our physician members be a part of our IPO, which I think was, was really, really important for us. And then for me personally, I think it's just the fact that the realization that it's we did it, you know. It's it's a first time CFO, and it was really daunting to think about the IPO process, and just that moment of achievement, I think, was was really special. Okay, so now tell me, what's the best advice you have for other CFOs who are thinking about the IPO process, and can you give us the insider perspective on what you wish you knew ahead of time as it relates to strategy or process? Uh, sure, I'd probably say two things there. So the first thing is that. You were shepherded along by experts for the entire process. So really lean on that. When it comes to the actual logistics and the process of going public, between the bankers, the lawyers, the external IR or accounting firms you're working with, really lean on them to shepherd you through the process and kind of tell you what's next. I'd say on the second side of that, the flip side is really stay true to your core messaging. I think no one knows the business better than you, and you might get caught up in looking at what other companies do and kind of trying to transpose that into what you're doing or put that in your S1 or put that in your messaging and just throw all that out the window and just focus on what's core to your business and what really matters to you and staying true to yourself. I think it's really important from a company perspective as you go on the IPO journey. That's great advice, Anna. Um, tell me, in what ways can the IPO process be transformational rather than just a transactional for companies? Oh, I think in many ways. I, that's a great question because I think a lot of people think about the IPO as, you know, big dollar value, right? But there's so much more that happens and so much more behind the scenes. It really forces you to think about what does your company look like today? What does it look like in five years? What does it look like in 10 years? It really focuses on kind of sitting down and being strategic about how you're thinking about the future of your business. And I think it has actually really helped us a lot grow as a company and grow in our ability to kind of focus in on, on where matters and where's gonna get us to that next step five and 10 years down the road. Okay, tell me, what was your favorite part of your IPO day? Oh, that one's, okay, that one's <laughs> easy, I'll say, but obviously besides celebrating with the team, which was such an amazing milestone, it was spending time with our market makers at Citadel. Uh, so we actually, we didn't open till 1 p.m. That's one thing I do wish people had told me in advance as we rang the bell at 9.30 and stock didn't open till one. But sitting down with our market makers at Citadel, I think was, was critical for us. It was so fun for the team. Everyone was hovering around uh, Peter over there at the booth and we're really kind of learning how the sausage is made. I think that was a really fun part of IPO day. Okay, another fun one for you. Can you recall exactly where you were or, or yeah, where you were when you submitted your confidential filing and tell me what was, what was that like? <laughs> well, I think it was 1 a.m. So <laughs> I was likely in my office trying to keep the lights on and trying to stay awake probably with a cup of coffee. Uh, but it was an amazing feeling. And the team was all up at the same time as well. And we were all counting down to the submitting it. And we all got on a Zoom call and kind of had a moment of celebration after, which I think is really important. It's really important to kind of celebrate those milestones because the IPO process can be so go, go, go. And that was a really, really kind of special, special moment for us. But it was 1 a.m. 1 a.m. is kind of late, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our summit today is titled Navigating the New Norm. As you think about the evolving role of the CFO, what do you think will be most important in 2022? Um, ESG strategies and disclosures, overall leadership, or being a digital supporter of the business? That's a tough one because all three of those are so important. But I think at the end of the day, when I think about the role of the CFO, it, it's leadership and being a strategic partner for the business because at the end of the day the results of the business are really what matters and being that strategic partner is really one of the most important things that that you could do as the cfo okay well anna thank you so much for joining me Thanks on so nyc floor me. talk that was anna bryson cfo of doximity